All right, hey folks, Joe here. I'm going to talk about the ATP tester um, today, and we're going to be testing here in a little bit. So what an ATP tester is, is it, it's the same thing they use in restaurants, like if when the health department comes in to test, they take these swabs right here. So you have a swab, it comes out, right, and you swab the surface, and you put the swab inside the tester, like so, close it, right, and then you go. So, of course, you gotta turn it on. So let me talk about this for a minute so you understand. ATP tester and a swab, that's all you need. These, these two things here. So, ATP testing um, is well known in the food industry, but we also use it in the restoration industry. And the reason um, we do that is because we're able to test surfaces like after flooding, for instance, um, like um, in Houston, in Florida, from Harvey and Irma, right, from all the flooding. Um, you know, we're able to test after flooding, after the water subsides, and you go in and you test. We want to know how contaminated the surface is. So on an ATP tester, between 0 and 10 is clean on this, this, um, eight, this one right here. This is a um, sure, uh, system sure plus tester. So between 0 and 10 is clean, 11 to 30 is questionable. Of course, closer to 10 is a lot better than 30, right? And then anything over 30, 31 and above is considered contaminated. So um, we use it in the restoration industry because we can do it after flooding. We can do it after a sewage backup, right? After we clean, like before we clean the surface, we can check it, not we, we get rid of the gross contamination we can see with our tester if our surface is clean is it is it okay if not right we got to clean some more we can do it with mold also because if there's mold on a on a we tear out a wall and there's still still mold on the on the studs on the floor joists you know on the subfloor whatever surface it might be um, if there's um, if there's still mold on there even if you can't see it if you've cleaned it this is gonna, this test from the ATP tester, this ATP tester is gonna come back higher than 30. Um, I've done thousands of these, so I know this for sure. So it, so we can use it in restoration because it tells us if we got the area clean. So for instance, if you're, let's talk about Houston for a second from Hurricane Harvey, okay? A lot of homes, a lot of homes got flooded. They had water three feet, four feet high, right? Some lower, some eight inches, whatever. When, when, when the water um, subsided and it went back into the ground and you were left with a wet surface, right? We, we, you, that would be cut out, the drywall. Anything that got wet because it's considered category three. You don't know what was in water because it flowed over land. It can be all these different chemicals, all these different things that can be in it. So we would do it, we would tear stuff out and then we would do a test right and then from that test we would it would tell us how much cleaning we need to continue to do or have we passed are we at a a 10 or below right did we pass um the test it was our cleaning done well enough so bacteria is a big big issue so when when you have contamination you have bacteria you always have bacteria and so that let, let me put it this way have you ever been in a home, or it might be your home, I know I had a pet one time that urinated a lot inside the house. It, she was older, she couldn't help it, and that's in that it would smell awful, right? And the reason it smelled bad, it was a bacteria that you were smelling, it was a bacteria feces, it was growing, that you can smell, right? So bacteria has a smell, and, the, and from Katrina, the biggest thing we always heard from um, clients after jobs were done, right, was that after their ha they had their homes rebuilt, they still smelled. They still had so this smell that nobody could pinpoint. Well, that's bacteria. It wasn't cleaned well enough. Nobody was using, or some might have been, you know, if, we, if, if everybody was using an ATP tester, before your rebuild started, we would know that it was clean. We would have under a 10, right? So we'd know you're good. And then you'd be able to do your rebuild, that smell would be gone, and then you wouldn't have to worry after you spent tens of thousands of dollars on a lot of homes rebuilding your home. So you don't want to be in that position. 
You don't want to be in a position where your home smells forever. And after you spend all this money to rebuild, it's, it smells and there's nothing you can do unless you tear all those walls out again. Take those cabinets down again. Nobody wants to do that. <clears throat> so it's, it's important whoever you use um, when you're having your home cleaned from uh, sewage, from, um, you know, from flooding, from you know, anything like that. When you're having a clean that you have it tested. Have somebody that, that knows how to use an ATP tester. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go downstairs and I'm going to test something that we all use every day and that's a laptop or a computer, right? And so on your laptop you have that touch pad, right? We touch it all the time. So I'm going to grab my wife's um, little computer that she uses um, and I'm going to test it and we're going to see if it's below 10, right? Can I get a below 10? If not, I need to get something below 10. And so the only reason I'm doing this, I know that has very little to do with if your house is flooded or sewage, but it gives you an idea if the, if the contractor that you hired, the restoration company that you hired, is testing correctly. And so you're going to know just by watching this video if he's testing correctly. So we're going to go downstairs. I'm going to set up down there and we're going to do some testing, okay? So I'll see you downstairs in a minute. Thanks. Today we're going to be learning how to use an ATP tester. So an ATP tester is used in food service organizations when um, they want to test the, like, the countertop where they cut meat or vegetables and they want to make sure it's clean, right? You don't want to, you don't want to eat at a place where it's not clean. So ATP testing can also be done in the restoration industry like, like we do here with the Meridrive. So what we do is if like, for instance, you had a sewage backup and we cleaned it, used antimicrobials, had it all clean, it's all dry, and we're going to want to test it with an ATP tester and we're going to want to make sure it's clean. So with this, with the System Sure Plus, anything between 1 and 10 is clean, 11 to 30 is in question, and anything above 30, like 31 and above, is, is dirty. So if we got to count like 1,000, it's extremely dirty. So with that being said, we can even test like surfaces where we've cleaned mold. If I was to test a surface that had mold, um, it, would, it would not come back between 1 and 10 or even 11 to 30. It would be a high number. So what I'm going to do right now is when we use a System Sure Plus ATP tester, when we turn it on, it calibrates. So basically what it does is it counts down from 15 to 0. You probably can't see that screen but it goes from 15 to 0. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to, how to actually test a surface. So we are at 4, 3, 2, 1. We're ready to go. The buzzard went off. When you're doing an ATP test, there's some liquid in here that helps the ATP test read it better. You never, you never use that liquid in the swab first. The swab's already moist. So you take it out of its holder like this. Okay, and you, the swab's already moist. So when you're testing an area, you're going to go across like four inches or so, and you're going to turn it, right? You want to get all sides of the swab. And then you're going to go crisscross, like you might go the other way. So I'm testing this whole, the keypad. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the swab back inside of its holder, and I'm going to break this. I'm going to break the top and I'm gonna push, I'm gonna squeeze it, and I'm pushing a liquid down into the swab right now. And I'm gonna shake it for like five seconds. So one, two, three, four, five. I open up the System Sure Plus ATP tester, I put it down in it, I close it, and then I hit the start button. And it's gonna count down from 15. I don't know if you can see that. It's counting down, and you should see a number as soon as this is done. There it is. So it's going to show a number. Do you see the number? I'm going to look at it now. So the number 259, I have a 259, which means this laptop is really, really dirty. So I'm going to come back in a second. I'm going to clean this, clean this laptop, okay? And then I'm going to do another test. 
All right, here we are, we're back, and I'm gonna go ahead and clean this surface now real quick. I got 125 parts per million of chlorine dioxide. We clean it real good, not put my finger on there to recontaminate it. That should be good, let's wait a second. While we're waiting, we're gonna take out the old swab that we did where we got 259, here it is. And we got a new swab. So we're gonna go ahead and start the machine. And we're going to let it count down from 15. So it's counting down. And it's going to buzz when it's done. Seems to take a long time when you're waiting for something, doesn't it? There it is. There's the buzz. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the swab out and I'm going to swab it again. So I'm going to use the swab, make sure I'm trying to get as much of the surface as possible. And just like on the other one, we're going to go crisscross. And we want to turn the swab as we're doing it. Okay? That should do it. We're going to put the swab back in. Once we put it back in, we need to break it at the top to let that fluid go down. We squeeze it a few times, and then we're going to shake it. Five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's go ahead and put it into the ATP tester. All the way down, close the machine, and let's hit OK. Let's start it. It's going to count down from 15. When it's done, we're going to get that number again. Of course, we're going to wait for the beep. When we get the beep, we're going to be done. Okay, there it is. You get to see the number before me. Well, we went down to a 24, which is really pretty good. A 24 from a 259. So if I wanted to spend more time cleaning the surface, you know, I only spent a few seconds, right? And I had uh, something, I had, I sprayed it down first, scrubbed it a little bit like we would on a real job. I just quickly, um, wiped it down, but we got a 24, which is really, really pretty good, all right? So remember, between 0 and 10, perfect. 11 to, to 30 is in question, so I would clean the surface again, and then anything above 30 is gross, okay? Thank you. Okay, I decided to give this one more try. As I was sitting here with the ATP tester, I actually... Um, it went down to nine from 24, so that that was a good passing score. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe it down one more time, okay? So one more time. So so the reason for this test um, is I'm gonna take the swab out. I'm gonna have to go get a new swab. I'll be right back, okay? I need to grab one. I have one right in here in the refrigerator in the laundry room. All right, I'm back. So we keep these swabs refrigerated. Um, they're supposed to be refrigerated. So I'm going to grab a new swab. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to go ahead and get the surface again. Remember, we want to go crisscross. Turn it as you do it. Okay. I'm going to put it back in. I'm going to turn this on so it counts down. It's counting down. There we go. Okay, so we're going to break this, right? I'm going to wait for this to count down. It's, it's on 10, 9, 8, 7, just so maybe you can see it from over there. All right, so I, I want to try to show you what, what happens. Okay, there we go, we're ready. So we're going to break it. That didn't break that easy. There we go, it broke. I'm going to squeeze it. I'm going to get the liquid to go down into the bottom. I'm going to shake it for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, here we go. Let's put it inside the machine. And let's go ahead and turn it on. There we go. It's counting down. I think you can probably see that. All right. 
we're going to sit here and we're just going to wait for it to finish. Hopefully I get under a 10. Like I said, I sat here for a minute and it went down to a 9. There we go, it's done. I got a 10. It's a passing score, a 10. And this number is probably going to go down a little bit like the other one did.